60 to 70 kilometers is a common speed when you're behind the wheel of a vehicle. It's a typical limit on major roads in suburban areas. It's the spot on your speedometer as soon as you accelerate while getting onto the highway. It's also the same speed that chuck wagon teams get up to on a racetrack. It might not look that fast, but people over the years, you know, they watch and they say, oh, you guys popped out of there, you run really hard, but until you actually get to ride in a wagon, it's, it's quite a bit of difference. It's be like driving a car, uh, going snail space down uh, White Ave, and then all of a sudden getting on the highway and cracking her wide open. There is no seat belts, there's no eject button, there's no nothing. So I know uh, Ford and Dodge and Chevy always talk about the horsepower they have, but I know we have more horsepower in our barns. <laughs> Why do drivers take that risk? The same reason other professional athletes put themselves on the line day after day. The rush of competition and a chance at glory. In this case, the creme de la creme of the Canadian Professional Chuck Wagon Association's tour the Denim Ram Tough CPCA Finals, where the winner of a last decisive dash will go home with a brand new truck. That's the adrenaline, and that's why we all do it. The, the rush we get going into a dash like this, and it's what we've been working for all year, so it's, uh, the emotions are running high. Everybody here is, is here for one thing, and that's to be standing on that stage, getting hand, handed those keys to that truck on Sunday. At the start of finals week, one would be forgiven for thinking nothing looks out of the ordinary in wagon camp. Drivers and their team of helping hands go through daily chores as they would for any other event. Every daily task is oriented around making sure that each horse is set by race time. Make sure they have enough days uh, underneath them that they're going to have enough bottom to be able to run uh, right through the whole entire year. And, you know, it's a, it's a 24 hour job for us. A job that's a way of life for each family. I don't know how many sports you can actually say you can be involved with your family every day. And then we get to do that in the summertime. Some people like camping and this is our, this is our summer thing is wagon racing. And uh, hopefully you can have many more days together and, and with family and friends and, and sponsors. Like that's what gets us down the road. So the kids do huge with the horses the feed, everything, so it won't be long because before they're pushing me out and they're taking over it all. You get that work, work ethic built into you and it's, I don't regret it. You know, you think your parents are mean or tough on you sometimes, but you know, we looking back, it's they're doing it for our own good. Many of the drivers have children that could take over the reins in the future, but BJ Carey says the sport's long-term viability will depend on its exposure to other communities. This group from Big Brothers Big Sisters gets a small look behind the scenes. The sport is, is grown from within, so when outside people come in and see it, I think it's a lot better and there's a lot more dreams of those kids wanting to do something like that. Maybe one day they'll, they will be an outrider, or maybe one day they will be a driver, and, and it, uh, it expands our sport to, to outside of our, our inner family here, being there, so the Chuck Wagon Association. At the north end of Wagon Camp is one of the CPCA's most well-known families and the most decorated at this final tour stop. But this wagon, covered in championship history, isn't driven by the seven-time champion, Ray Mitsuing. Here you have my oldest brother, Darren, Dad, my second oldest brother, Dean, myself, and my brother, Devin. Dale Mitsuing has been an outrider for 12 years, playing a role in many of his father's victories. 
Now transitioning to the wagon box, Dale hopes to usher in a new era of success on the track by honoring his family's past. This horse here we lost a couple years ago. If you look over top the wagon box, you can actually see the horse's shoe I nailed into my box. So it's kind of a little hope that he's with us kind of thing. Some more uh, memorial buckles, Ken McLaughlin, that one of dad's friends. One time I got into a little wreck and I had a horse head me at about eight stitches, blood coming off my face and Darren said, how you feel? Couldn't really see and he's like, well, two words, brother, cowboy up. So I put the saying on there. So every time uh, he's riding behind me, he sees that accomplishments that my brothers had, my dad had. So it's something that I, I uh, drive with pride and I feel like, uh, I feel like it does help me out like mentally. I look at it and there's a lot of history here, so something I got some big shoes to fill up. Following a seven-time champion's footsteps are indeed big shoes. But Ray's first piece of advice was straightforward. Start of the year, he said, you want to be number one. If you don't want to be number one, you don't want to be in this business. You always want to shoot high. You got to set your goals high at where you, what do you want to achieve in wagon racing. and. If you do that, then you'll be successful. A Mitsuing sibling having success on the racetrack is nothing new, as older brother Devin showed in winning the 2011 championship. However, Dale's inaugural campaign is nothing short of unprecedented. I knew he was uh, capable of uh, driving a wagon, but how good, I, that part I didn't know. You know, like he's, he's pretty good at it. Next year he's retiring, so I need to step into the shoes and I stepped up to the plate and drove and I actually pulled off a good drive and Dad was wondering where the heck did he learn that? Sitting fourth heading into the finals, Dale has arguably already had the most impressive rookie season in the history of the association. And that has the rest of the field taking notice. To drive as well as he has, especially, you know, climbing into the top four, coming into the, you know, the final weekend shows how well he's done and, you know, bodes well for his future uh, to come. Wednesday morning feels eerie, with smoke filling the air and an orange hue cast across Lloyd Minster that looks more like a dystopian future than it does the middle of a prairie summer. Weather variables often have a major effect on horses and their drivers, but in this case, everyone is simply happy that there hasn't been any rain. Yeah, I've got nebulizers for the horses so it clears their lungs and that. And they have them on for about 15, 20 minutes each horse, so that'll help for tonight especially. Over in Todd Baptiste's barn, his horse Hollywood is less affected by the conditions than an eagerness to get out on the open track. That's his normal uh, attitude right there. He's just uh, high strung, ready to go all the time. And he'll be running and uh, he'll be ready to go this weekend here too. So looking to be able to get him out there for me. On the east side of camp resides another name that constitutes Chuck Wagon royalty. Chance Benzmiller comes from a long line of racing greats in the sport, and through that upbringing, he's learned to recognize that the name on the wagon is less important than the stock of those pulling it. These horses are an extension of myself. When we go out there, I mean, everybody says, oh, good drive, you know, good run, this and that, but it, to me, it's the horses. They're the ones putting on the show. They're the ones doing the work. We're just the ones lucky enough to, to be there. The late uh, Vic Smith, which would be a great uncle of mine, he always said that God gave him wings and we're just the ones lucky enough to fly behind him. So, you know, it's, it, it's crazy to think about uh, the connection that we do have with these horses. While haziness remains, conditions have improved by race time. And as those lining the stands at Halstead Downs will soon find out, this year's event won't disappoint. There's the horn and the charge is underway. Running multiple outfits is an advantage for a few of the drivers. It also comes in handy for the finals, where the endurance of each horse matters much more during five days of competition. This is the only show during the season that we run four wagons, so there's a lot more, uh, there's a lot more jockeying for positions and planning uh, when you come into the show as well. Better's myself, because you're doing it more, keep yourself keen, 
driving different horses and you know every horse is different too so they're little quirks and you got to be just on the spot and ready for them. Despite the smoke it's a fast start to the week but none faster than the competitors of the final heat and in that group of four it's leader Chris Molly and rookie Dale Mitzewing that are setting the pace. EWM steel on the inside. I'm there and I'm in that spot and that's one of the best in the game that's who you want to beat and I'm racing right beside him, so it's pretty cool. Mitsuing's rapid ascension in the CPCA ranks has added a new wrinkle to an already captivating season. Jamie Labacane and Molly sit well ahead in the standings, but the final two spots are still up for grabs. Seven guys, eight guys potentially, that can crack that top four yet. So um, I don't remember ever there being that many. It's great for the sport and it's great for the CPCA. Guys are going to be going for it, gunning for it. So if you can stay away from penalties and uh, you know really run fast, you're, you're going to be in there. And the guys that you know go for it a little too hard and maybe take a barrel or have some penalties, uh, they might drop out of it. It's pretty unique, and I think it's going to make uh, a lot of fun for the fans to to view what's going to happen in the next four days. Day two has more favorable conditions, but there still remains a hint of smoke in the air. The crowd nears capacity at Halstead Downs, a racetrack that stands out as much for its length as it does its quality. It's a very uh, short jog to that first and second corner, uh, but once you hit the, the fourth fourth corner and hit that home stretch, you got a long run to the home stretch. So, you know, guys that don't necessarily turn as hard as other guys, uh, they have a shot at you know pulling out wide and running people down the lane. Add that distance to extra days of competition and that makes barn management critical. To be able to manage the horses, to be able to make sure that you're not gonna just run out of, uh, you know, running power and be able to still stay strong till the end of the weekend. So it's very important to keep that in mind. Several drivers further down the standings are taking advantage of clearer air, but there's one that still stands out. HSI home stretch drive is in sight for Chris Molly. BWM. Chris Molly has finished second in the point standings for three straight years, also just missing out on the prize truck. Now firmly atop the rankings with a pair of day money wins, his focus is on the dash. They've been running well on these bigger tracks this last year for me, so I'm you know very anxious to get out there. Barreling decent for me too, so. You know, as long as we come out clean and get that rail, it can capitalize. After an evening of racing, the camp is filled with food and good cheer. In contrast to the competitive nature out on the track, you'll see drivers pop in at their neighbor's tents to have a sample of the other's cooking. Many drivers will even swap horses for an event or two. Chance and I are really close buddies. We, I go borrow a horse from him or BJ, and you know we're all there to help each other out. And, but like I said, on the racetrack, we're there to win. What the collaborative spirit and post-race barbecue atmosphere really signifies is just how much of a group effort the sport of chuck wagon racing is. Not only for the wagon horses, the outriding horses, the the outriders, the driver, and the barn help. I mean, it's a big team effort and. Uh, also a part of that is your sponsor. Without them, uh, all this time, money and effort would be for naught. It's been an enjoyable start to the CPCA finals, but at the end of day three, another wrench is thrown into the narrative as to who will go toe to toe on Sunday. A disastrous start on day three for Dale Mitzwing continuously worsens as the evening rolls on. A hit barrel, late outrider, and interference results in a 28th place finish due to penalties. Yeah, for sure. That's uh, one I'd like to, well, I wish I could get back, you know, like a, like a mulligan or whatever you want to call it, but um, just forget about it and keep on running. After looking secure headed into the weekend, Mitsuing now finds himself in a precarious position. Just two and a half points separate Chance Benzmiller and Todd Baptiste from third to fifth, with the rookie driver a nose ahead of Baptiste to sit in fourth. 
However, because Mitsuing dropped in the aggregate, he needs one of the day's best runs, as well as a drop-off from either of his two closest opponents. It makes it good for everybody. I mean, everyone's really tight for points, so, you know, we're all going to go and try our best. You can go out every night and have day money by 10 seconds, but if you take 10 seconds of penalties every night, then it's there's no point. So a guy's got to run clean and consistent every night, and not only do you got to be uh, consistent, but at the end of the day, if you can be in that top five or top 10 every single time you run, then you're guaranteed, be, guaranteed to be in the final four. With the elder Mitzwing hitting a barrel on day one, the only other driver still in range is BJ Carey, sitting 17 and a half points back of fourth. A frustrating position for the veteran driver who missed five weeks with a broken finger. There isn't a word to explain it. It's frustrating. Uh, you see your horses out there and you're not out there with them. Um, if, if there's a penalty, uh, it's always, oh, I could have done this different, I could have done this different. And maybe you couldn't have, but it's always in the back of your mind. There's going to be injuries like any sport, and it was my turn this year. So. While the focus is on the top six in the standings, a familiar face flying under the radar has outrun the competition. Dallas Dick posts the fastest time yet for the weekend at 117.90, taking day money as well as the aggregate, a nice consolation prize after missing out on Final Four contention. We kind of showed here at the end of the year that we do have the horsepower to run with everybody, so can't, can't complain. Mitsuing takes home third fastest time of the evening, but has to wait to find out if he stays inside the top four. One thing is for certain, whoever wins that denim ram truck will be a first time CPCA champion. If you look through the, through the years, there's actually not that many champions when, you, when it comes down to it. So when there's a new one, it's always exciting. Most of the camp is either dancing and having a good time or has already headed to bed. The Mitsuing crew, however, are back to work on the horses, hoping to speed up their recovery before one last race. Dale's third place run was only two one hundredths of a second ahead of Todd Baptiste, but it was enough to hang on to the fourth and final spot in Sunday's dash. It's kind of cool, it could be, it's, it's a, it's a record setting thing. Uh, there's been no rookie in a dash in CPCA or NPCA history, so to be the first guy to ever do that, it's kind of cool. That paves way to a quiet morning for the Benzmiller clan as penalties knock the veteran driver down to 19th Saturday night, placing him 11 points short of Mitsuing. It's a disappointing finish to an otherwise excellent season. Taking that one second last night didn't help and uh, I mean even the outrider the night before uh, or two nights before taking two seconds didn't help. At the end of the day you know my horses I'm happy with how they worked. Uh, you take away their penalties and they're, they're all superstars in my eyes so uh, we'll just revamp and come at them again next year. Chris Molly finishes the 2018 campaign as the definitive points leader, the most consistent driver on tour, and based on his first two days in Lloydminster, the favorite heading into the final dash, having the inside barrel. But overconfidence is not even a blip on Molly's radar. Luck of the draw is who's on the inside, who's on the outside, and you know when you're on that one barrel, you make sure it counts and you get to keep that rail. The guys right behind me, they, it's just I can't bobble because they're going to be right there and capitalize on it. So I've got to drive my best, drive smart and clean. On the number two barrel, Jamie Labacane is in his fourth dash and hopes that his outfit will have a hot start. They give me the same trip every time. They start, they turn and, and they finish, you know, very hard. And if I'm on the inside on the rail, um, I'm a tough contender. Baptiste is in his second CPCA finals dash and believes that his team is as prepared as they can be. We're right there where we want to be. Um, there's not much more we can do at this point, but uh, you know, do our job and horses do their job and run clean. It's a tough assignment for the rookie phenom on the outside barrel, 
but Mitsuing believes that a combination of horses he has not ran together before gives him the necessary power to break free on the home stretch. I know the horses can do it. It's just a matter of fact of me mentally preparing myself and letting the horses run. Silence as they await the go-ahead to enter Halstead Downs. A three-month grind comes down to one last sprint around the track and each member of the capacity crowd is on the edge of their seat. The drivers take their practice turns around each barrel and then, in the words of Les McIntyre, There's the horn and the denim ram top CPCA final dash is underway as we cast our fate to the figure eight and there goes Chris Molly to the inside, Jamie Labacane up the middle. It is Dale Mitswing and Bells drilling, streaking into the lead on the far outside. And Todd Baptiste, Soar Oilfield in behind the pack as the dust flies between the turns. Dale Mitswing, Bells drilling, getting down and dirty. He leads them into that T-Link aggro backstretch drive, but he's got company a coming. Here comes Chris Molly, PWM Steel, going up alongside of Dale Mitswing and Bells drilling. Day two, I uh, looked over, Molly yells at me, we're having a race, boy. And I said, it's on. And you know, I sent my horses a little too early and he, he outran me coming home. So tonight, it was the same thing happening, same scenario. I brought their heads back, I gave them their air, and I let Molly run ahead just a little bit so my horses knew the race was on. And then when I hit the fourth corner, I really sent my horses and they kicked in overdrive. And here we come to the HSI home stretch drive. The louder you cheer, the quicker they get here. On the inside, it is Chris Molly on the outside. Dale Mitswing headed to the wire with his wheels on fire. Bells drilling Dale Mitswing by a horse length over Chris Molly. Unprecedented. Each driver in the dash blows past the previous best times for the week, and the fastest at 1.17.65 is a rookie. Crown champion in his first year, the ninth championship won by a Mitsuing. This is just crazy. EWM Steel, by golly, it's Chris Molly. Molly's outfit performed much like they have all season, running more than a full second faster than their previous best time from the week. Unfortunately, their best wasn't enough in the dash. I knew it was going to be a race and mid swings have great power, horsepower there, so I knew it was going to come down to the wire and you know what, I playing out, got run and good for them guys. I can't take nothing away from them and they did a super job. As special as the finish was, there's one more moment in store for a proud father and his son. Basically, you won't win when yourself you're, when you drive, so I did it in my first year, threw him the keys, and my goal was I was going to win one in Calgary, but I won one a little earlier, so I'll have to wait for Calgary to invite me and then go and win one there. I kind of backfired today when he gave me the keys to, to the thing, so no, it's unbelievable. <laughs>